Yes, let's start today's session. So in the last session, okay, we just discussed about uh, only introduction to .NET and what subjects I covered in .NET uh, core package we were discussed. So those who are new to my session today, I request you please watch my first video in our YouTube channel, like Durga Soft YouTube channel. Okay, so even our team will send a link, uh, uh, that video link after completion of sessions, so that you can able to watch my first lecture. So this is the second lecture of .NET Core, sir. In this lecture, I'm going to discuss complete introduction in detailed versioning application area what type of applications we can develop using dotnet we'll discuss but before that for new students so let me explain uh, what subjects i'm going to cover so after that we'll go for complete introduction to dotnet so this session is completely belongs to dotnet core in this dotnet core i'm going to cover uh, these many subjects like c shop dotnet asp dotnet core and ASP.NET uh, Core MVC Model View Controller Entity Framework Web API and completely next uh, SQL Server and ADO.NET also I'm going to cover along with the uh, .NET Framework. So using .NET Framework I'm going to cover ADO.NET. Using Core Framework I'm going to cover Entity Framework so that you will get idea about how to handle with the uh, ADO.NET and also how to handle with the entity framework code so to communicate with SQL Server. As I said in the last session, so in this all subjects, we are going to learn one programming language that is called c .NET. So every .NET programmer must and should have aware of at least programming language idea that is called c -Shop. So why C Shop? Because .NET supports lots of programming languages like C Shop .NET, VB .NET, J Sharp, F Sharp, Windows PowerShell, and so on. But C Sharp is the most recommended language in entire the .NET applications because maximum uh, applications and maximum uh, companies will use C Shop .NET to implement their .NET applications. So once a person or students know that C Shop .NET coding styles they can handle easily with ASP.NET, MVC, Web API. Everywhere we can use C-Shop.NET only. So C-Shop.NET is a major part in .NET entirely. So you can, you should have the knowledge of C-Shop.NET compulsory before going to continue with ASP.NET Core and MVC, Web API, Entity Framework. And SQL Server, any point of time, you can able to learn it. There is no uh, prerequisite to learn SQL Server. So in our lectures also from the, uh, well, next week onwards i'll implement this not this week this week just demo session and next week onwards my plan is every monday to thursday c shop.net sessions will conduct like four days per week and every friday and saturday sql server sessions i'll conduct sql server means completely around 20 sessions i'll conduct in detailed sql server concepts i'll discuss not about only basics okay so if you know the programming knowledge and SQL Server like database knowledge, then it will be easy to handle with ASP.NET, all MVC, Entity Framework, Web API. So SQL Server is for database tool. This is also product of Microsoft. Majority of the .NET applications will have the SQL Server as a backend application. And ADO.NET stands for ActiveX Data Object here. This is a native driver software. It is used to communicate from front-end application to back-end application. Generally, front-end design we can do with ASP.NET using HTML. And logic, we can write coding part c .NET. So c -sharp with ASP combination is called front-end. And SQL Server is what actually back-end only. c -sharp is the combination of front-end with ASP.NET. SQL Server is what actually back-end application we can say that. That is. So SQL Server uh, knowledge also compulsory required once you start develop the .NET application, sir. Next, uh, in ASP.NET, we will focus on completely web application development, websites we can design using MVC architecture, model view controller. So nowadays, MVC architecture is most popular in every web development. 
so you are going to learn mvc architecture only so that too with the dotnet core uh, framework only as i said in my last lecture dotnet framework means it makes platform dependent which will run on only windows operating system dotnet core means core framework means which will make dotnet applications are platform independent means it can be run on any operating system clearly it's a completely um, multiple operating system it will work on similarly like java java is how it was platform independent same when we go for core framework dotnet core framework it's make platform independent our applications so this is what i discussed in the last session and even to complete all these subjects including ui basics sir actually ui basics ui technologies basics means html plus css plus javascript plus jquery okay and bootstrap so how to handle these all things uh, all these things in asp.net before going to start with asp.net core we will we'll conduct few sessions about uh, ui technologies means user interface technologies especially in the designing kind of things we can do with html css javascript jquery bootstrap these also I'm going to cover uh, basics of UI technologies, how much it is required for ASP.NET, okay? Because uh, every web developer, uh, every uh, web application need HTML, CSS, jQuery, Bootstrap, this styling is required. Mostly we will use Bootstrap more in ASP.NET Core. So these subjects I'm going to cover, sir, four months duration is compulsory, as I said that, okay? Four months duration and every day session is going to record and today also it's going to record yesterday also it was recorded video available i have downloaded already so once your registration is completed i can save i can start share the recording lectures to your google drive and all recording recorded videos can be downloadable and also complete a soft copy of material pdf c sharp asp sql adu or complete soft copy of material pdf i can hand over it to you so this is what uh, we are conducting the sessions now coming to this dotnet introduction i'm going to tell you so yesterday just a basic introduction i conducted like dotnet is the product of microsoft and dotnet stands for actually network enabled technology network enable technology dotnet stands for network enabled technology or network enterprise technology we can say that but according to microsoft there was no abbreviation of dotnet so this this is just for a uh, programmer side only so programmers usually call it as network enabled technology or network enterprise technology but there is no official abbreviation for dotnet according to microsoft and dotnet what is dotnet actually so what is dotnet here so what is dotnet means you should not say it's a programming language okay and you should not say it is a technology so dotnet is a framework tool dotnet is what's actually framework tool which is used to which is used to which is used to develop develop the applications or software's applications we can develop so what is dotnet means dotnet is a framework tool so what is dotnet framework here what is dotnet framework or dotnet core framework also we can call it as generally framework is framework is framework is framework is a collection of collection of class libraries class libraries means built-in class libraries that means as soon as when we download and install dotnet software in our computer lot of framework libraries will be installed using that libraries we can able to start developing into of application so dotnet framework dotnet is a framework tool and which is used to develop the applications what is dotnet framework means dotnet framework is a collection of class libraries class library means collection of predefined classes each and every class is having some methods so all are built in and it's available readily so that are called ready-made resources use that ready-made resources and you can implement your dotnet applications very easily so majority maximum contribution will come from framework so from the programmer minimum contribution is required to develop applications in dotnet so dotnet framework is a collection of class libraries and as i said that dotnet framework also there dotnet core also there whenever we try to develop any application uh, especially when we when we start creating application at the time you will know that clearly it will ask you clearly do you want to develop the application using dotnet framework or dotnet core framework two options are available you can select it 
okay so i'm going to run all the applications with on core platform only that will be good right now nowadays okay even if you, if you you need to have the idea about dotnet framework also some for lectures like c shop dotnet related lectures I'm, i'll go with dotnet framework and all asp dotnet lectures i'll go with core framework or else completely also i can go with core framework as per your requirement not a problem it is but coding style and coding pattern will not be changed in c shop dotnet even if i select dotnet framework or dotnet core framework but coding style and pattern completely different in asp.net core and asp.net framework only so i'm going to teach you asp.net core framework not asp.net with framework so that is the clarity i'm giving here so coming to this these framework class, class libraries are ready-made resources so built-in libraries so you can use that built-in libraries and uh, you can develop application only but coming to this here so dotnet framework is a collection of class libraries dotnet framework is a free software but after downloading and installing dotnet framework software where we can write the code okay so where we can write dotnet code okay so generally to write dotnet code we need a software tool or editor tool this editor tool is called what actually visual studio we can say that editor tool is what visual studio all the dotnet developers can use visual studio editor tool this is called integrated development environment ide we can say that integrated development environment this visual studio uh, i recommend to use visual studio 2019 or 2022 this is the latest 2022 so these two are recommend versions visual studio 2019 and 2022 but there are a lot of visual studio versions also there along with the dotnet framework versions also let me explain some versions of visual studio and versions of dotnet framework versions of dotnet framework dotnet framework and versions of uh, what we can say uh, visual studio each and every framework is having separate visual studio uh, version support so versions of dotnet framework and versions of visual studio let me open my previous documentation so that you will get clarity so what versions are there and how it will be so let's open quickly the documentation just showing the versions now you can see these are the versions of visual studio and framework microsoft has announced uh, dotnet in the year of 2000 first version of dotnet was released in the year of 2002 i said no so this year these are the versions so dotnet framework and visual studio the first version of dotnet framework was 1.0 at the time microsoft has given vs name called visual studio and that next version 1.1 at the time microsoft has given vs 2003 2.0 version vs 2005 3.0 then not applicable means vs 2005 only they were recommend to use at the time of 3.0 framework and 3.5 vs 2008 4.0 vs 2010 4.5 vs 2012 4.6 vs 2015 4.7 vs 2017 4.7.2 vs 2019 4.8 is what vs 2022 so this is dotnet framework okay especially we are going to use in c shop dotnet this dotnet framework 4.8 yes 2022 or 2019 also recommend but when it comes to dotnet core frameworks that are different so we are going to use currently dotnet core 3.1 which is most recommendable in real time so even dotnet core 5.0 is also there that was completely stopped from the microsoft and they are released dotnet core 6 only dotnet core 6 is very too advanced level so that nothing is there all the ready-made resources more is there so that's what there is less scope to learn from scratch so that's what i'm going to teach you completely asp.net core 3.1 version so dotnet core 1 is there 2 is there 3.1 is there 5 is there 6 is there but we are going to use in our sessions dotnet core 3.1 completely core version if you uh go through dotnet framework means latest version i'll cover 4.8 and if i go through like asp.net core dotnet core 3.1 version i'm going to cover so visual studio obviously i can go for vs 2019 or 2022 both are there in with me so 
just for ASP.NET Core point of view, it is very comfortable 2019. Okay, this is fine. So this is 2019 or 2022, you can able to use it. So how we can get Visual Studio? Simply you can go to uh, Google and type download Microsoft uh, Visual Studio 2019 or 2022. So you'll be able to uh, directly official website, you'll be able to reach like Microsoft downloads. There I'll show you uh, clearly which version need to be installed. Community is there, uh, enterprise editor is there, uh, professional editor is there. For example, you can see this download Visual Studio. I'm just hitting download Visual Studio, sir. So let's click on this downloads. First link is there, visualstudio.microsoft.com. So first official link is there. Then after that, you can see community is there, free download option is available. Professional is there, free trial version is available. Means at maximum they are going to give 90 days trial version. You can use this professional after 90 days. Evaluation period will be expired. Again, you need to purchase from Microsoft. And it is only for small teams only, suited for small teams. Enterprise edition, it's a scalable edition and like end-to-end -end solution for teams of any size. This is can be used in real time mostly. They'll purchase this product from Microsoft. And for student point of view and uh, practice point of view, I strongly recommend this free download, powerful ID, free for students and open source contributors and individuals. This we can download it and install it simply. So this is software editor tool I'm going to use for my complete coding styles if it's using cshop.net and asp.net, MVC, entity framework, web API. Every time I'm going to use Visual Studio tool only here. But SQL Server, I recommend uh, SQL Server 2019 software. So this is the latest version. This I'm going to explain you when I start SQL Server sessions also. So ultimately, if you want to work with .NET, compulsory in your computer you must and should install two softwares one is sql server 2019 next one is visual studio 2019 or 2022 these two softwares you have then easily we can able to write the programming so that is possible sir next coming to this application area of dotnet application area of dotnet what type of applications are there and which applications mostly we are going to concentrate in our lectures we'll discuss here so application area dot using dot net we can develop uh what we can say stand alone or desktop applications stand alone or desktop applications stand alone or desktop what is meaning of stand alone or desktop applications stand alone or a desktop application means the applications once we design and develop and that application where we install on that particular mission only it will work and other missions will not work that means standalone or desktop applications so we are focusing especially in the standalone or desktop applications mainly console applications we are focusing so console applications console application it will provide completely cy sir command user interface or character user interface next i'm trying to focus on windows forms applications windows forms applications Windows Forms application is completely uh, GUI based, graphical user interface. So console application programs are just like C, C++ programs, fundamentals concepts we'll discuss more. And this is very crucial for every .NET developer because maximum C sharp .NET subjects you are going to learn, concepts understanding point of view, console applications are very important. Even I'm going to cover in console application, very basics like data types, operators, control flow statements, and collection data structures and uh, object oriented programming principles and a lot more we will cover in console application and when it comes to windows forms application this is completely graphical user interface that means we are going to develop windows forms here windows forms means like uh, if you want to generate notepad kind of applications text editor applications windows calculator or any standalone application development for internal organization purpose we use windows forms application but don't think so this is a web application sir <coughs> it's not a web application all the web applications we can build using asp.net only with a ui technology support so these are standalone applications or desktop applications these are not online applications or web applications using dotnet we can also build web applications rapidly 
web application development completely with the uh, possible asp.net through only the asp.net stands for active server page i said clearly in the last session so it's not a programming language it is a web technology or server side technology here so though we are going to design uh, web pages or websites using asp.net technology but behind the scenes logic part we are going to write completely with csharp.net only so that's what here web applications with asp.net okay so these are called distributed applications or online applications also we can call it as so all the asp.net web applications are online applications are after completion of applications once we host on the server everybody can able to use and access throughout the world by typing web address simply here so web application point of view compulsory you should have the strong knowledge on c sharp.net as well as asp.net as well as basics of ui technologies compulsory along with sql server idea here that's the reason before going to start asp.net we should finish c sharp sql ui basics then we'll ready with asp.net development progressor so this is going to happen next coming to this apart from these main applications also using uh, .NET, we can develop mvc based applications mvc based applications means what m for model view for view c for controller actually this is main area sir where we can uh, develop many applications in real time model view controller platform so what is mvc mvc is a architectural design pattern especially this is related to asp.net so asp.net mvc is there asp.net core mvc is there so i'm going to show you some differences asp.net mvc is there earlier before core asp.net mvc is there this is completely with the .net framework okay but in our session i am going to discuss completely asp.net core mvc means core platform through i am going to explain asp.net core mvc is different asp.net mvc is different along with the .net framework again if you build asp.net mvc applications on top of .net framework this applications can able to run on only windows operating system if you build applications on dotnet core platform mvc applications this can run on any operating system that means platform independent so in our lecture i am going to discuss asp.net core mvc because our topic is completely dotnet core core related i am going to discuss not framework related okay yes because most of the companies are looking dotnet uh, core only nowadays so not asking dotnet framework but anyway i'll make you idea dotnet framework through how to deal it and dotnet core framework through how to build it here so this is mvc model view controller model represent always database it's a three layer approach actually completely so apart from mvc normal applications also we can build but uh, two layer connection will be there front end and back end communication is there directly but we are going to split maximum code in three layers approach only that is model view controller model will act as a database database uh, logics okay so we are going to write model classes means a database entity classes that is entity framework class only view is nothing but completely ui basics like presentation layer what we are going to see uh, finally when we execute the application in the screen of web application that is view view is a presentation layer controller is completely control the model and view both uh, then controller is required so asp.net controller here controller will play the crucial role in this case so whenever we send request to a server completely first controller will take that request and controller will identify the view and model then required data will collect from the model and it will display to the presentation layer only so no worries at all at this moment what about mvc mvc i'll clearly explain when i start uh, uh, development of asp.net applications so as of now not required to know about mvc just leave it about this so mvc applications also we can build using dotnet and also using dotnet we can develop windows services yes windows services we can develop and also using dotnet we can develop web services web services web services uh, is a old old technique and later microsoft introduced wcf services that is called windows communication foundation windows communication foundation windows communication foundation 
now we are going to learn apart from web services and wcf i'm going to teach you in our application like web applications web api web api is completely rest api kind of things but generally java programmers usually call it as restful services even in django uh, we used to call it as a rest api in a .NET point of view we can call it as web api ultimately this web api concept is related to api creation in our class we will discuss how to create api using asp.net how to test that api also whether it is working or not we'll discuss in detail this is a part of asp.net core mvc only see the thing is entity framework web api uh, what is that asp.net mvc all together under comes into asp.net web development so once i start to to develop this apis or to work with entity framework or mvc applications compulsory prerequisite is cshop.net without cshop.net you can't move on okay that's what i am saying that first we should focus on cshop and after that sql server once we complete that so we should focus on asp.net core mvc entity framework web api so all under comes into asp.net platform only so web applications web apis also we can build using dotnet and also using dotnet we can develop business applications means as per client needs so if a client is having any requirement according to their business needs then we can take the requirements from them and we can build that applications for them business applications using dotnet we can build network based applications also possible sir network based applications and using dotnet we can build <coughs> mobile applications and gaming applications also possible gaming applications and mobile application development also possible using xamarin tool okay especially in dotnet xamarin tool is there uh, using xamarin tool we can develop mobile application point of view and many more applications we can build using dotnet so this is exactly application area of dotnet only here okay so our programming language is ultimately c shop.net so normally whenever we go for uh, c c++ programming language how the code is going to execute sir in in the context of c c++ languages so normally whenever we write the code that code is called what code actually source code no suppose assume that if i take c language if i write some code in c language whatever we write that code in c language that is in the text editor that is source code only generally source code is compiled by what language compiler here source code is compiled by language compiler respective language compiler because every language is having its own respective language compiler that compiler will compile the code and finally produce what code actually byte code so byte code can be understandable by uh, operating system so a bytes code only can understand operating operating system can understand byte code this is called binary format or system understandable code or mission understandable code this style of execution is c c++ point of view what code we write in the editor that is called source code it's going to compiled by language compiler after successful compilation it's going to be generate what byte code or mission code so this code can be transferred to operating system for further process but when it comes to dotnet dotnet code execution process is different sir so there are two compilation takes place in dotnet program execution let me show you quickly a diagram so that you'll understand clearly how the dotnet code is going to be execute so code execution process of dotnet sir this is exactly code execution process in dotnet you can take any programming language as i said that so dotnet supports many languages like uh, c sharp j sharp bb f sharp j script okay iron ruby iron python windows powershell many languages can support but most of popular language in entire dotnet applications languages are c sharp dotnet so we are focusing on c sharp dotnet so consider this is the language compilation and execution process especially uh, when we write uh, code using c sharp dotnet or any other programming language so first compilation second compilation two compilations takes place in dotnet program execution so consider this is first compilation normally whatever the code we write using c sharp dotnet in our editor tool like visual studio that is called source code source code means before going to execute or compile the code that is called source code and this source code is compiled by respective language compiler that is lc lc means language compiler 
every programming language is having its own language compiler language compiler will compile the source code after compilation successfully this language compiler will generate what code i know msl code microsoft intermediate language code or common intermediate language code or intermediate language code like this only msil cil or il anything you can call it as but make sure that this is not a uh, binary code or byte code or system understandable code this is still in english language format code our operating system cannot understand that language so this should be converted into completely byte code or system understandable code only but this is up to here first compilation takes place here source code is compiled by language compiler and it's generate uh, msl code msl code is microsoft related code so a first compilation takes place here and when it comes to second compilation now you can see second compilation in the second compilation there is a component called clr i'll talk about uh, .NET components also clr is there it is a main component actually common language runtime common language runtime how java programmers have like jvm java virtual mission same .NET programmers have clr that is called common language runtime clearly so clr is responsible to provide runtime environment or execution environment for dotnet applications common language runtime so this msl code is going to transfer to clr clr inside the clr there is a compilation one more time like git compiler is there just in time compiler this just in time compiler will compile this msl code after that it will execute by clr so code is executed by clr after execution clr will provide native code or byte code or system understandable code this can be transferred to operating system for furtherly for understanding purpose so this is second compilation majorly in second compilation JIT compiler is involved which is associated with clr only so clr is the main component in dotnet program execution this will provide to uh, this will provide execution environment or runtime environment for dotnet applications clearly okay now coming to this here uh, first compilation is always slow when compared to second compilation sir because maximum code like uh, minimum 60 to 70 percent of the code is compiled in the first compilation so remaining 30 to 40 percent of the code is compiled by second compilation so jit compiler is always faster compilation than normal language compiler so first compilation is slow only when compared to second compilations are clear first compilation is slow when compared to second compilation so this is code execution if you take any language like to c sharp web f sharp j sharp any language the uh, once we start writing the code and after that compilation and execution this is going to take place in behind the scenes only you must and should aware of this how code execute here source code ssc means lc means language compiler msl means microsoft intermediate language cl means common intermediate language il means intermediate language clr common language runtime jit means just in time compiler here so these are the components are included in this uh, execution process okay so first compilation only language compiler will take care and produced msl code microsoft intermediate language code that msl code is transferred to clr for the second compilation and execution okay so next uh, there are some <coughs> important dotnet components will be involved sir so dotnet components okay or dotnet framework components also we can call it as dotnet framework components so main two components are involved these two components are very very important in the time of uh, writing the code and executing the code first one is uh, base class library pcl it also called as framework class libraries sir base class libraries base class libraries it also called as framework class libraries or fcl we can say that fcl means framework class libraries framework class libraries framework class libraries framework class libraries so base class libraries or framework class libraries we can call it as this is 
So class libraries are nothing but what collection of classes, what classes predefined classes. So when we download and install Visual Studio 2019 or 2022 along with respective frameworks will be downloaded and installed. No problem. But uh, as soon as <coughs> once we download .NET software with Visual Studio, automatically base class libraries get installed, sir. These base class libraries are building blocks of .NET. These base class libraries are building blocks of .NET. That means without base class libraries, you can't write .NET code. If you want to write a .NET code compulsory, base class libraries are required. Base class libraries are required, sir, compulsory to, to start writing the code. Because main core libraries, <coughs> main core libraries got installed when we use this uh, base class libraries only. So once we got the libraries, that means we can able to use the these libraries and using these libraries we can able to develop the application these are just building blocks of uh, .NET framework and how c programmers use like header files before writing their code and how java programmers use like packages and python developers can use modules same like in .NET we use these libraries but we can call it as these namespaces so before going to write the code and we use namespaces exactly. These namespaces are coming from this base class libraries only. BCL or framework class libraries. I can say that without base class libraries, you can't able to write the code. So writing code is not possible because to implement any applications on the top of the program, we should include required libraries. And always base class libraries in the form of two ways. One is .exe, it's nothing but executable file. And next one is DLL. DLL stands for dynamic link library. We can say that dynamic link library, sir. Dynamic link library. Base class libraries are in the form of two different ways. One is .exe, that is executable file. Next one is DLL, that is dynamic link library. So these two are under comes into BCL. So what is exe? Exe means executable file. It will run directly individually by default whenever we double click on .exe application will start execution because it's having an entry point entry point of the program is nothing but static wide main method static wide main method is there in cshop.net programming part that is called entry point so it's having an entry point what is that .exe is having an entry point that's what uh, because of this entry point only we will execute uh, 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 .NET programming clearly. So .exe is an executable file. It will run directly. It's having an entry point. So that's what we can run directly the application. But whereas DLL is their dynamic link library. So it's not an entry point. It don't have any entry point. It's not a main file also. It is just a supportive file. We can say that. What file it is? Supportive file. So dynamic means runtime. Link means adding. What it will add? Library will add. So dynamic link library. So DLL stands for dynamic link library. It is just a supportive file we can call it as. What is this supportive file? This supportive file, it will support to .exe <coughs> at the time of program execution. What way this .exe is required some libraries, it will add it. So this DLL is called supportive file. And in our sessions, how to create DLL file and how to reuse them into other applications also we will discuss in our session so dll is very important dynamic link library files are it's a supportive file only okay yes so this is the main component first component of dotnet framework and second component is there that is called clr just now in the execution diagram i included clr clr stands for common common language language runtime clr stands for common language runtime so common language runtime means clr main purpose is it will provide a execution environment uh, or uh, what we can say runtime environment for all dotnet applications how many it will support for every language execution environment purpose common language runtime will take care so without clr you can't execute your program but clr categorized into lot of subcomponents that is cls it stands for common 
language specification common language specification and also one more component is there that is called cts common type system common type system this is called data type system representation and also we have in uh, uh, this uh, what we can say gc is there so garbage collector first let me talk about gc yeah. gc only garbage collector it is especially used to provide memory management i'll talk about garbage collector in detail in the next session tomorrow i think so dot garbage collector and j8 is there just in time compiler we can say that just in time compiler j8 means so these all four sub components are available under the clr common language runtime only so jit just in time compiler every sub component is having its own role sir so common language specification is to understand all the language specifications which are coming like c sharp as j uh, <coughs> c sharp f sharp different different programming language code we write no that all language specifications can understand by clr by using cls only and data type system mechanism also different from one language to another language c sharp data types are different bb data types are different all the data types are different no so that data types can be converted into clr understandable format that is by using cts only so cls will take responsible to convert all the uh, programming language rules and regulations will be converted into clr standards and c common type system is responsible to convert all programming language data type system into cts uh, clr data type system format only garbage collector is there it is just providing automatic memory management so that means uh, memory management whenever the application is needed some memory memory will be a lot it is not needed then memory can be destroyed so that automatic memory management process there is a lot of discussion is required garbage collector that i'll discuss in detail in tomorrow's session don't worry and jit means just in time compiler it's a compiler which is used in second compilation of dotnet program execution always just in time compiler is a faster rate of compiler than normal language compilation so to run your dotnet application who is required clr is required to write your dotnet application code who is required base class libraries are required so base class libraries without we can't write dotnet code without clr we can't run dotnet code so running and writing both are important to write dotnet code and running code so this what dotnet components are important so this is about today's session dotnet framework components and application area and versioning of dotnet framework and visual studio and what is dotnet dotnet framework and clearly again which subjects i am going to cover in our sessions in detail so for more details you can stay in the stay back to uh, you can uh, stay tuned to tomorrow so we'll discuss in detail clearly tomorrow and after that we'll introduce some c -sharp .net. once i introduce c -sharp .net, then i'll start coding part with visual studio clearly okay so that's all for now from my side this is second lecture and those who are new to this session today i strongly recommend to watch my first video lecture which is available on youtube and even after completion of this session our team will send a youtube link also for uh, watching my previous lecture videos so it can happily watch it here and once your registration is completed so i'll collect mail ids from durga soft i can start share my video lectures up to now what conducted like two sessions and you can also uh, wait for one more session or two more sessions also for registration purpose only no problem at all so that's all from my end today so if you have any questions you can feel free to ask me now i'll try to clarify your doubts Hello. Yeah, Mr. Sio process, tell me. Hello, sir. Uh, uh, can I speak in Hindi? Yeah, you can tell me. Uh, sir, uh, uh, is may project lene wale kya? Complete hone ke baad? Obviously, we are going to conduct the project uh, with uh, regarding ASP.NET only with C Sharp and all those things, database connectivity with SQL Server. And uh, resume preparation, sir. Resume preparation also, I'll do it. I'll support it. No issues. If you are a fresher, then I'll assist you how to do it. 
and uh, uh, interview questions and uh, uh, interview question already available so i'll send to you completely your uh, mail account so pdf is there complete interview questions are there basic and intermediate and advanced level with regarding all the uh, subjects okay. sir uh, 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 minimum configuration of laptop uh, no configuration minimum just 4 gb ram is required and uh, 20 30 gb c drive space is enough then operating system windows or any other operating system also it's work fine because we are using dotnet core platform it can be run on any operating system so for better understanding uh, windows uh, is better and uh, sir uh, it's uh, required uh, any requirement because uh, 2015 19 uh, visual studio Oh, we are using 2019 Visual Studio. So 2017 also you can use, 2019 also you can use. Even 2022 is there, but uh, most of them in real time, 2019, 2017, they'll use because immediately they'll not update uh, as soon as product was released. So it takes time to update new versions in reality. So that's what we are going to use, not new, completely new versions, just before versions we are going to cover. That will be good for learning process okay okay sir thank you yeah. okay. mr mirza tell me yeah good afternoon sir and it is first please meet your uh, audio uh, behind the scenes what uh, noise is coming then you can talk to me yeah so actually i am working uh, before like testing and mm -hmm. i want to move from dotnet side okay so so it is fine for me uh, it's okay it's so it's, it's okay no problem and if you can learn from dotnet uh, you can learn the uh, dotnet from scratch no issues but no prerequisite uh, learning is required like cc plus plus basic not required because everything okay. will teach from scratch only basics onwards because undoubtedly very, yeah it will uh, work I out know. undoubtedly actually i am i don't know how to write the code and everything so i'm thinking it's possible for me or not see the thing is uh, you should not get doubt about it because uh, once if you are before going to start any codes then no one will ready to write the code no so after learning then they can start slowly writing the code then by by flow it will come so it's not a big deal for everyone okay only the thing is practice is required from your side everybody not only you and everybody who are learning the course and practice is required practical knowledge is important only just simply attending the classes and understanding the concept is not work out in interviews and the real-time development keep on practice that will be good okay so you are providing uh, like uh, uh, some forms are designing then i will practice right yeah, compulsory. Whenever I start coding, you will come to know that how the way I'm teaching and what scenario I'm going to develop. And uh, in C Sharp .NET, completely coding is there. Then ASP.NET, we have to do design and coding and managing with the database. All things we have to do it. Okay. So actually, I more focus on C Sharp because I don't know coding. So C Sharp is main important. In yeah main side. important c sharp is the main for everything like even yeah. asp mvc everywhere we use that technique solely yeah because back end you are using only c sharp so mm. that is the reason okay fine sir yeah okay tell me mohammed was him yeah tell me uh, i want to uh, ask one question tell me Sir, I have gap of three years after completion of my post graduation. So, sir, there is any problem in a real time industry? No problem. You can happily put that three years experience, then you will get more package compared to someone. That is advantage only. Why? What is the problem? So, problem will be only after five years. Like if you keep five, six years gap or five, six years experience, then so there is a problem in technical aspect, but three years, it's not a big deal. You can easily handle. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, hello. Yeah, tell me. 
sir how to pay uh, how to make a payment for this uh, course and registration so uh, i think uh, if you attend yesterday then already you got a mail from durga soft i think so no problem today also you will get the mail so they'll give you some uh, account number account details also then you can do it and you can share the screenshot to them so confirm it that's it okay sir yeah Yeah, that's all for now. Thanks for attending this session. And if you wish to really continue my lectures, don't miss the sessions. And regularly, you can maintain the, the classes. That will be good. That will be clarity. So see you tomorrow again uh, on the same link at same time. You can join it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Miras, anything you want to ask me? No, it's fine, sir, from my side. Yeah, okay, fine.